content of this interview is provided for information and education purposes only. You should consult your physician for advice on treatment, including supplements. Supplements may interact with other medicines and other health conditions. So please check with your doctor first. Welcome back to our 10-minute interview on the B1 therapy with Daphne Bryan. Welcome Daphne and thank you for joining us. This time I would like to ask you about your story. When did you start vitamin B1 therapy and why B1? I started B1 in the spring of 2017, five and a half years ago. After my Parkinson diagnosis in 2010, I continually searched for ways to slow the progress of the disease. And when a friend sent me a brief article about an Italian neurologist who was helping his Parkinson patients improve with B1, I didn't think long before deciding to add the vitamin to my pile of supplements. Good. How did you decide how much B1 to take? Which were the first symptoms to improve, if any? I think my answer to this question should come with a warning. Don't do what I did, do what I say. Five years ago, I knew of no one trying the therapy, and I was totally unaware that the therapy wouldn't work unless you found the right dosage. I simply took a tablet each day and got on with my life. I'm amazed, looking back, that I was so lucky that I stumbled across a dose that produced results, except at the time I didn't even realise that I was getting better. Not understanding how the therapy worked, I'd not thought to monitor my symptoms. My life had become busy, I'd taken on more work and joined several classes as well. Yet I was totally unaware that this was because I had more energy. After all, I still went to bed tired. Then I remember feeling an unfamiliar sensation in my face when I smiled one day. It was as though my face was waking up. Another time I remember having a massage and feeling that I was able to really relax for once, which felt very good. This was several months after I began B1. By six months I was feeling pretty good. My rigidity had gone, which allowed me to write normally, smile, walk normally, play the piano once more. I had more energy and less anxiety, and I could smell things again. I was so incredibly lucky that the dosage happened to work. If one tablet a day hadn't worked, I would have abandoned B1 and I don't want to imagine how I'd be today without it. For some, the first dose might work. However, people should monitor symptoms carefully so that they can spot improvements which will indicate that they are on the right dose. If no improvements are seen after four to six weeks, then it's time to increase the dose and try a higher one. Well, that's pretty interesting, and it's a good lesson for everybody, I guess. So if we have to conclude in, in your experience, in your own experience, how long did it take you overall to start feeling better? It was probably a couple of months before I started to hope that the small signs I was spotting really meant that I was getting better. Some people noticed improvements quite quickly, but for many of us, the changes creep up on us very gradually. My brother visits once a year and tells me that I'm still getting better. Wow, that's quite an achievement. And actually, it's uh, very encouraging for everybody who wants to try B1. Uh, did you have any side effects from vitamin B1 at any time do you, during your trial? 
no, I've had no problems taking B1 for what is now over five years. When the doses become a little too high, which has happened from time to time, I feel a little edgy, sometimes more stiff. Perhaps I don't sleep quite as well. But nothing serious, and as soon as I take a break, the symptoms subside. It's a common practice to take lab tests. Before starting B1 therapy, did you have lab tests carried out to check if you had vitamin B1 deficiency? No, I didn't. The therapy is not treating a thiamine deficiency, so lab tests wouldn't be much help. Right. That's, that's good to emphasize. Were you taking levodopa when you started B1? And if so, did you stop it or did you reduce the dose of levodopa? I'd had my Parkinson diagnosis seven years before starting B1, and I'd accumulated quite a few Parkinson problems and restrictions by then. So I was already on a low dose of levodopa. I've not stopped or reduced my levodopa dosage. I see no point. Dyskinesia is probably one of the biggest concerns as levodopa medication increases. And Dr. Costantini suggested that B1 should reduce the chances of developing that. Dr. Costantini also believed that his patients should take enough levodopa to replace the shortage of dopamine caused by non-functioning neurons. He said that although thiamine could help revive the neurons which had begun to fail, it couldn't help those neurons which had stopped working. High-dose thiamine therapy is an adjunct therapy, not a replacement therapy. All right, so you, you started feeling better? That means you had found your right dose. So if you have to say, since you started vitamin B1 therapy, did you have to change your dose later on? Yes, I've reduced my dose quite a few times. The first time was after a year when I felt I was a little hyper, like a feeling you get from too many black coffees. Since then, I've reduced my dosage in tiny steps whenever I had the black coffee feeling again. When I first took the sublingual tablets, I didn't hold the dissolved tablets in my mouth long before swallowing. When researching for the book, however, I read about how sublingual tablets should be administered, and I adjusted how I took them. Suddenly, much more of the vitamin was being absorbed into my bloodstream, and this led to a huge, unexpected overdose. It took me some time to find my right dose again, and I was in the ridiculous situation of writing a book about a therapy that I had temporarily lost control of. So over the first four years, I reduced my dose from seven tablets a week to four. But after I'd improved the way I took the tablet, my dose reduced hugely, and I currently take one quarter tablet every sixth day. I know there are people still on their original dose after several years, but for me, my instinct is to make sure I continue to feel better. And when I start to feel stiffer, slower, or my sleep is not so good, then my instinct is to adjust my dosage to return to feeling better once more. Dr. Costantini suggested that when you had found your right dose, that would be your dosage for life. Yeah. He did suggest taking breaks to cope with overdose, yeah. but he didn't mention needing to reduce dosage over time. That's just what I do and touch wood, it's working in that my PD has not progressed in five and a half years. Well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, most people would think, looking at the worsening of symptoms, not to overdose, but they would think of increasing the dose rather than decreasing the dose. So it's interesting that you have told us how you've been able to manage and how successful you have been in this respect. Now, many physicians are a little bit hesitant to accept vitamin B1 yet. Now, you're a neurologist. 
must have seen the changes that have occurred in you, the improvement. What does your neurologist say now that he can see, touch with hands, that your Parkinson's has not progressed? Well, since moving to Scotland two years ago, I've been referred to a new specialist, of course, who doesn't know my history. Though when I saw her, she was impressed that I had no rigidity or bradykinesia after 12 years. My previous specialist, when noting my initial improvements, suggested I should have a DAT scan to check whether I still had Parkinson's. <laughs> Both specialists have been only mildly interested in what might have caused the improvements. I think the medical profession's hands are tied as to what they can and cannot suggest to their patients. So until funding can be found to enable a rigorous double-blind study, I think our neurologists will not want to know more. Thank you very much, Daphne. And thank you, everybody, to listen to us again. Bye-bye.